My name is Sana and I'm back here today to show you guys how to make a delicious Arabian rice pilaf with chicken called kapsi. Kapsi is originally a Saudi dish, but it is enjoyed all over the Middle East and the Arab world. It is um, spicy, a little bit spicy. It is very flavorful and aromatic. We use a delicious kapsi spice blend that I find in any of the Arab supermarkets um, or grocery stores. I will include a a recipe to make this spice blend just in case you guys don't have a Arab grocery store near you in the comments okay and on the blog the entire recipe all the details the ingredients the method are written in the comments and it is written in the blog sanaset.com so do check it out if you want more details alrighty I'm gonna start by showing you guys my ingredients first of all I have around two and a half to three cups of basmati rice that has been soaking in water. And I'll soak this for around an hour, so it's already been soaking. I have two large onions. Uh, I've used white onions here. You can use gold onions, you can use any onions. Um, and these are chopped. I've got salt, pepper, like I said, the capsaicin spices. I've got three small potatoes. I'm using Yukon Gold today. I need an entire, um, what do you call this, a bulb? An entire thing of garlic. I'm gonna use around seven tomatoes. They're really small uh, Roma tomatoes. I already blended five of them. I'm gonna show you how I do it and what I use. If you don't have something to blend your tomatoes, you can chop them really fine, and that's totally fine too. I've got four full legs of chicken. Skin on, bone in, alrighty? Let's begin. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna take my chicken. I'm gonna add some of my capsa spices to the chicken before I fry it up, alrighty? And I'm gonna use around a tablespoon on my chicken and a tablespoon in the dish. And I'm just gonna take this tablespoon and just roughly add it to all of this chicken. And of course, I don't want to cross contaminate with raw chicken, so I'm going to use some gloves to handle my raw chicken. Here we go. I'm just really going to rub all these spices all over. Ooh, yummy. Make sure you get a little bit of it inside. I mean, you want it all over the place. And thing is, this is gonna double the flavor profile because once this hits um, the oil and you start frying up the skin, especially and browning the chicken before we cook it in the sauce, of course, um, these spices that we've added are gonna like fry up as well and the oils are gonna release and that, you know, that smell, that aroma, that flavor, mm, double. Alrighty, I've got these covered. Now let's go and fry up our chicken. Alrighty, I'm gonna add a little bit of my cooking oil or vegetable oil to my very big pot because I am making a whole ton of this rice pilaf or kapsi because I am feeding my kids, my husband, my in-laws, the entire family. I'm going to start on a very high heat because I do want the skin on my chicken to brown and get all that flavor in and then I'm just gonna I'm really only browning it and taking it out onto a plate look at these chicken pieces I've got all of that yummy delicious spice done really well inside and out take a look and as soon as this oil is hot enough I am going to add it in there I think it's ready now okay oh listen to that sizzle I am putting it skin down because that's what I want browned first. And again, I'm really only doing this step for extra flavor. And I'll take it out pretty soon because I don't want it to cook in here. Not yet. While my chicken is uh, frying up and getting a good color in there, I'm gonna show you step number two, which I've already done. It is um, chopping the onions. Like I said, I used um, two large onions. You can use golden onions or white onions, or you can even use purple onions, whatever you have. 
I also have around five tomatoes that have already been blended here. I use this little nifty machine that I have from KitchenAid. I really like it. It is very small though, so I have to do this in um, two turns. And this is the rest of my tomatoes because I am using eight tomatoes in total. I did cut up these tomatoes into um, little quarters. I'm gonna add them and blend them up. Uh, again, I don't always do this. This is just to make things a little easier on yourself. You could chop up the tomatoes into really, really small pieces though. That's why I just put it in the blender. It's just easier. I am only doing a rough blend. I don't want it completely juicy. I'm gonna add this to the already blended tomatoes and you can see how much I have now. Let's go back to the chicken because we can, I think, flip them now. Oh yeah, look at that color. They got a nice color on the skin side. I'm just gonna flip them for a couple of minutes on the other side and then take them out. All right, this chicken is now nicely browned. I'm going to take this off the heat and put it in a little platter. It's just gonna rest here for a little while while we work on making our sauce for the rice pilaf. Alrighty, now I have my onions ready. I have my tomatoes ready. I need to prep my... What is this? Garlic. <laughs> 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 oh my God. I literally have like three tools just to get this garlic ready. I am using an entire head of garlic. I know it's a lot, but I'm telling you this rice, oh my God, it is aromatic. It is delicious. You are gonna be eating it for days, if any is left. Because in my house, this rice pilaf is done on the same day. You are lucky if you get you know, a little bit of leftover at night. I did get this little tool on Amazon, which is supposed to um, make things easier when you're trying to peel garlic. You're supposed to put your garlic in there and then use your hand to mash it. And it just comes out. Oh, will you look at that? That actually worked. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use it. I might link this in, in the blog if you guys are interested. This is a pretty cool tool. You, I bought this like a month ago, but this is the first time I actually use it. All right, you guys, I have all of my garlic ready. It is an entire head of garlic that I just um, mashed with my little machine. And I'm going to use the same pot that we used to fry up that chicken. I am going to put it on a medium high heat. This is the same oil. It still has that flavor and the spices from the chicken. And once it's a little bit hot, I'm going to add the onions. I'm gonna fry up the onions first. I'm adding a little tiny bit of oil to this pan because I don't think it has enough. You just want enough to coat all of your onions and for your onions not to burn. You want it to caramelize a little bit. This oil is ready for my onions. I'm going to add them and start frying them up. As you can see for the two and a half cups of rice that I have, this is a whole lot of onion, but it's only gonna add flavor and yumminess to this rice. So this is one of many, many yummy, delicious dishes that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. You can see here my onions, because I'm using the same oil in the same pot, um, that I use for the chicken. They're already getting a bit of the color from the spices that were in here. Now I'm going to fry them up until they get to just that translucent phase. And then I will add my garlic. At this stage though, I can add some 
salt and pepper. The salt will bring out a little bit of the water in the, gar in the onion. There you go. And some black pepper. You can also at this stage add a little more uh, chili or cayenne pepper to make it spicy if you want. Um, my kids do like spicy food, but they don't want it overly spicy. That's why I'm not going to add any more. The capsi spices are a little spicy, tiny bit, so I'm not going to add any more. But you can if you like it spicy. I know some people also like to add some chopped up capsicum or green peppers, red peppers to this dish. I've seen capsi made in um, several different ways. Uh, it doesn't vary too much though. It really just is, you know, adding some uh, green peppers or something else like that, or maybe a little bit spicier, but the base really is here. This is how basically most capsis are made. Mm, you can just smell the aroma from these onions. We'll give them another couple of minutes to get translucent. Meanwhile, what I did is I peeled my three small potatoes and I cut them into halves. I do want them a little bigger. I don't, I don't need to get any smaller than this. Uh, as they cook with the sauce, they're gonna get sticky sweet on the outside and really tender on the inside. It's gonna be really delicious, a really good addition to this dish. Mm, my onions are nice and translucent. They are ready for the garlic. Take a look, this is what they're gonna look like. I am going to add all of the garlic that I just mashed. And that is one entire head of garlic. And the reason I add it after the onions are really well cooked is I don't want it to burn because garlic does burn really quickly. It cooks way faster than onion does. And if it burns, it will get very bitter. You don't want that in your rice or in any of your dishes. Now I do like to build on my flavors. Um, so I, instead of like adding all the capsi spices at the end when I put the tomatoes, I am going to add just a little bit now to the onion so this can fry up a little bit with the oil and all the you know oils of the spices can be released and the aroma can come out. I put I think around a third of a tablespoon. You don't need to be too exact, just put some of the spices that you've kept for this dish in this stage. Ooh, that smells yummy. At this point, our onion and our garlic have both cooked. We can add all of our tomatoes and just put it straight in there. Mix this up and let it cook for a little bit just so all the flavors can marry. And this is again where you add the rest of your cups of spices. I am adding around most of a tablespoon, so three quarters of a tablespoon. Check this out. And then I usually judge by color. If I feel like it is too light, I will add more cups of spices. So to me, this does look a little light. So I'm gonna do two things. A little bit more of the capsa spices and one secret ingredient. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste because as you see my tomatoes, I don't think they were very red. So just to add a little bit of color and depth of flavor, I am going to add maybe a teaspoon of tomato paste. Here's my tomato paste. You know, I like to cook and I like to bake. And one thing I've noticed, and I think a lot of people do know, is that baking is more of a science. It's very exact. Cooking isn't. So you can make these decisions in the middle of your cooking. You can say, you know what? My tomatoes are a little pale. I don't think I have very red ripe tomatoes. I'm gonna add some tomato paste to this. And that is totally fine. As long as you build on these flavors, so you can end up with a really delicious dish at the end. Now I prepared some water. I don't want to use too much. I want to have enough water in this pot to cover the chicken so that the chicken can continue cooking and be done. So I'm going to add most of this. 
I'm also going to add some salt. And then I'm going to put my chicken back in. And once it's all sitting in the juicy tub here, I'll check if it needs more water to cover and cook. I honestly think this is enough because the more water I add, the more I'm taking, or not, not taking away, but I'm diluting the flavor. And I don't wanna do that. So I am going to stick to this. This looks like enough. I'm now going to cover this pot, bring it down to a medium high heat or more like a medium heat and let this cook for 20 to 30 minutes so that the chicken is completely done. And I'll see you on the other side. Guys, this is looking delicious. Come take a look at this chicken. Oh my goodness. If only you can smell this. It smells aromatic. It smells spicy and rich and just yummy. I cannot wait to have this. Our chicken looks mostly done. At this point, I want to add my rice, but before I do that, I can take the chicken out. I'm just going to take them out, put them on this platter and leave them aside while my rice cooks. Mmm, this smells so good. All right, as you can see, my sauce looks delicious. My potatoes are pretty much tender. And this is ready for rice. I'm just going to plop it all in here. Give it just a little bit of a mix. And somehow, magically, we have the exact right ratio of rice to water because this is really how much you want. You don't want any more or less than this. Take a look. Your rice needs to look pretty soaked in. There is a good amount of water in there to cook it. We will start, now it's been cooking on a medium heat. We're gonna take it a little higher, um, dry it out a little bit for a couple of minutes. Then we're gonna actually take it back to a lower, like a low medium heat, cover it and let this cook and steam for around 15 to 20 minutes until your rice is done and tender. At which point we will bring back the chicken, decorate it and just enjoy. It's been around 20 minutes since this rice has been cooking and I think it's done. I did have to come back midway, add a little bit of water and some salt, but take a look at this. Look at the colors, look at the texture. It is still really fluffy. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transport, transport it into my nice dish here and then add the chicken back on top. It looks so beautiful. This is literally why we fried it up with those spices in the beginning. It is to add some flavor. It is also to add some beautiful color and just make it look so beautiful. Take a look at this. Now this is what I call a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey of making delicious Saudi rice pilaf, otherwise known as kapsi. This is so delicious, I cannot wait to get my fingers in here and eat almost the entire thing. And I can. This is really yummy. It smells really good. I know my daughter is sitting right there and she cannot wait for me to finish this so she can get in here. So please tag me in the comments, send me pictures, let me know how you made this for your family and if you guys enjoy it. Thank you.